Coming up on Cinema KC, we take you behind the scenes and behind the camera, interviewing some of Kansas City's hottest filmmakers. You can meet the creative team that makes James Bond and Kansas City look cool. Right, and we're going to show you an innovative film that has out-of-this-world design work. Cinema KC starts now. Welcome to Cinema KC, your own personal film festival. I'm Erin McGrain. And I'm Michelle Davidson. Thanks for joining us. We have an exciting show today with Sean Hammontree from MK12. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Now, your films are inventive, imaginative, and technically speaking, pretty awesome. Pretty amazing. How Thank would you describe MK12? Um, visual hobos. <laughs> <laughs> or rock stars or in rock the film stars, world. Or rock stars, well, yeah. Certainly you're making some amazing and unique work. So let's take a look at the first film by you that we're going to see. This is Sunken Lust. Well, I love that. That's just an amazing film. I noticed that you use a lot of vintage imagery in your graphic style. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um, sometimes, uh, you know, it's, it's due to inspiration. We're into a lot of the uh, older aspects of design. Um, it's a great element to help take the digital out of something that's very digital. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it takes a little bit of the cleanliness out of it and helps bind things together. Sometimes it's its own element, just the, the idea of using something that is, uh, has an antiquated look to it. Um, the idea of seeing something strangely animated that looks like it came from the 60s is something that really appeals to us. Combining you know, two different elements that normally don't go well together and just seeing what that third element, uh, what the result is, um, that's, that's our main thing. So you say we because you're a part of a team at MK12. Absolutely. What is your individual background? My individual background is music. I'm, I'm the only one that did not come from a, the visual art school motif. I, uh, Went to school for opera and brass and sang and <laughs> knew I couldn't make a living out of that. I still play music, but you know, decided to go into art a bit because uh, I, c I couldn't afford to pay someone to do my art. <laughs> for, <laughs> <laughs> so I learned to do it myself and then met up with the guys. And well, years later. It's not surprising because that music has such a strong element in your storytelling. Yeah. So I see your background probably plays into that. Yeah, sometimes the music drives the visual, sometimes the visual drives the music. It's very, there's a lot of, um, uh, back and forth with that, which is fun. Keeps it fresh. Now you have a, a piece for the cause of Occupy Wall Street. Mm, absolutely. Proudly. Let's let's take a look at that.
I love that. It's so clever and so smart in such a short amount of time. Why did you make it? Um, really to support uh, the, the cause. Um, we were contacted by uh, the Zero Film Festival and asked if we wanted to do a piece for it. And um, one of the, Ben, one of the partners uh, at the office, uh, had a great idea for the Pong game. Mm -hmm. And it played so well into the theme. It kind of told the, you know, the entire uh, aspect of the, of the movement without us having to put much work into it. So we did it over the course of a couple of weeks and uh, had a lot of fun with it and gave it to them. And, and it was played on, on the side of a couple of buildings in downtown New York and in a couple of film festivals. So you had a great response. We had a great response. And we, we didn't expect that at all, but it was, it was overwhelming. It was great. It was great. It was uh, for a good cause. And I love that. I love that you tell stories um, using imagery rather than words. I, and I love that. I think that was a perfect example of that. You mm -hmm. really got your point across. Um, and I'm sure that they were pleased with the Yeah, and that was, that was such a direct, um, a direct theme. You know, normally some of our pieces, even though there's a narrative to it, we let, I, liked, I liked to hear what the viewers think it's about. What has the response been? Oh, it, with uh, the Occupy Wall Street mm -hmm. piece, it's been overwhelming. It's been strongly, strongly received and uh, much to our surprise, really, because when we did it, we, you know, we were hoping it would do well, but we really didn't promote it to promote ourselves. Normally, when we do a film, it's you know, to promote us or promote our, what we're working on. This was to just give it to them and let them have it and let them you know, use it to their, their will. And uh, it still came back to you know, give us some praise that we were very humbled by. Did it take off virally? Well? I guess so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Once it hit one site, then it hit, you know, between all the design sites and the actual sites dealing with the Occupy Wall Street, uh, it kind of took a life of its own, yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, after the break, we'll have another MK12 project. Telephone me. Here at the intersection of 18th and Wyandotte was ground zero for Kansas City's Film Row. Every major studio, MGM, Fox, Warner Brothers, Fairmont, Universal, Columbia, and Disney, all had offices here from the 1920s up to the 1980s. You're watching Cinema KC. Welcome back to Cinema KC. We're here with Sean with MK12. Now set up this next film that we're about to see called Telephone Me. Um, shortly, it's a, an experiment about an experiment. All right, let's take a look. Here's Telephone Me. These X-ray films were made by the Goyne Research Laboratory to prevent languages from being forever lost to the study of man. You could look at it as a kind of detective story. Edit. That's the way it begins. A story of language, sounds, and human speech. Something most of us take just for granted. You'd hardly think about it. Speech is being a specimen for scientists to take apart piece by piece, study, analyze. But this is a science, science of linguistics. But scientists have discovered a conspiracy to do away with the alphabet by producing the world's first talking machine, shaped sound into telephonic speech over ordinary telephone visits. The machine separates all sounds into two things, pitch and brain power. That gave the scientist an idea. Why not just create speech artificially? These patterns of light show pitch and loudness in each instant of sound. When they feed these patterns into the electronic, automatic, sound spectrograph, computer digit, translator, playback recognizer, machine, phrase, never kill a snake with your bare hands, comes out looking like this. Never kill a snake with your bare hands. Looks more like a fuzzy kind of shorthand. But what really come out of the speech mechanism are electronic phonemes that confuse thinking overtones that convey true meaning in any language. The speech areas of the brain are like a clean slate, ready to be written upon. The machines and showing a monumental conspiracy in the East in 1929 and have been painstakingly working their way to the West. Scientists don't know exactly how it all got started. Once on the move, the machines grew like a great telephonic tree with branches joining it limbs, branches growing out of other branches, branches running up into twigs. Some sock yaks packed in that flax cracks. But it takes more than that. Even if your alphabet conspiracy succeeds and you destroy the books, the machines have no minds of their own. They're easily confused by different voices and different accents. It's the brain of man that tells them what to do. Just as men of science explore the atom, the gene, the 
universe. Engineering, electronics, acoustics, mathematics, anthropology, chimpanzees, physics, geophysics, physics, chemistry, human beings. Ways of understanding each other. The pattern of speech may one day be the instrument that will bring compatibility and understanding to human beings and other machines everywhere. So long, amigo. Keep cool. Now, I want to know how you came up with the idea for this. Do you sit around a room and just kind of spitball ideas or? Kind of, yeah. yeah. I mean, we actually, you know, we, we like to brainstorm. We do roundtable meetings and everyone kind of you know, puts in ideas and then we kind of shuffle them all around and come up with one. This, this particular piece, though, was uh, an experiment that was uh, kind of loosely based on an, an old William Burroughs technique of cutting, of, called the cut-up technique. Um, we had found the film which was an original film in the 60s called uh, The Alphabet Conspiracy. You know, it was a strange film teaching about you know, uh, voice and machinery and whatnot. And so we took it, we cut it up, and then randomly put pieces back together, and it kind of naturally formed its own story about the government making a machine that you know, dictated language. Um, and so then took that and drove the visuals based off of that and actually made a machine that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, an automated language device. And uh, after that, you know, you just kind of, you kind of trust it, and go with the flow, and start creating the aesthetics based on what you're seeing and hearing, and and that's how it ended up. Do you storyboard, like actually sketch out what you're about to see? Or? Nor in a narrative situation, yeah. Mm -hmm. In this one, this one was more of a little bit of chaos theory. It kind of, uh, I love pieces like this because it, it, there's an aspect of it you have no control over, mm -hmm. and I love that. So you don't really know what's happening until it's kind of done. Um, Are all your films experimental? For the most part, I would say, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I was, we always try to do at least something experimental within them. You know, sometimes it's more of in the background, um, you know, either with the music or something like that, or a technique. Sometimes the entire piece is experimental, which telephone music is a good example of mm -hmm. that. All right, we'll have more with Sean after the break. The lovely Ginger Rogers was born in Independence, Missouri. She went on to Hollywood to have a long career making 73 films and winning an Academy Award. But she was best known as Fred Astaire's love interest and dancing partner. You're watching Cinema KC. <laughs> Welcome back to Cinema KC. This next film that we're going to look at is called Follow the Sun. I love this film. Tell me about the title. Uh, Follow the Sun uh, came after we were about halfway through uh, the making of it, and just the idea, you know, with the sun cooking. There, well, I won't say too much. Okay, but it's Let's kind of self-explanatory. <laughs> Let's take a look. Follow the Sun. Hello, and thank you for your business. Why not stop by our refreshment stand? We have all kinds of special drinks, but don't take my word for it. Take it away, fellas. Come on, take a stroll to the step bar and Come on, take a stroll to the step bar and have a good time. Popcorn for all, hell's on its way. Come on, take a stroll to the step bar and have a good time. minutes till showtime. There's still plenty of time to visit the refreshment stand. Come on, take a stroll to 
Oh my gosh, that's just an amazing film. Okay, obviously your films have a lot of dark humor in it. Mm -hmm. Talk to me a little bit about, about where that dark humor comes from. What do you find funny? And uh, I find everything funny. <laughs> so uh, as far as it being dark or not, I guess it's kind of you know, to, the, to, the, to the viewer. Um, we usually don't really realize it's dark until after we've already done it. <laughs> so certain parts of the film that you know, are, are pretty obvious, uh, it was just we saw the moment. and. It's kind of a, the beauty and the, I guess the caveat at the same time of you know, being in control of your own little animation studio is that you just can kind of do anything you want. And if they don't like it, well, sorry, but you know, hopefully they do like it. <laughs> and I loved the music for this as well. Is that original music yeah. for this? That yeah. little song that was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah, wrote it, sang it in the whole nine yards. Did you sing it? Yeah, yeah, Is that yeah. you singing yeah, it? Yeah, oh, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. That makes it even better. <laughs> um, um, you know, this is a pretty twisted piece, actually. I mean, mm -hmm. there's some kind of funny little things in there. Were you guys just having a really bad day, or what? It all happened at the Boulevard Drive-In Theater, the whole idea, <laughs> because um, the film, the, uh, their intermission films, glitched and oh. got caught up, and it made this horrible sound for just a, a moment. And I was with one of my, my business partner, Ben, and uh, we just looked at each other. We knew exactly what we were thinking. We didn't even say anything. <laughs> and I think we started on it maybe a month later. Oh, that's fantastic. And it kind of formed the whole thing, this whole chaotic drive-in theater piece. And I know that you're going to some film festivals. That's yes. terrific. Congratulations on that. Thank you very that. much. Thank you very yeah, much. That's great. We'll be anxious to hear about um, how that experience goes for oh, you. Oh, yeah. All yeah. right. We'll be back in just a few minutes with Cinema KC. Kansas City-born Jean Harlow was the most famous blonde in the movies of the 1930s. But as a little girl, her nickname was The Baby. She didn't learn that her name was actually Harleen and not Baby until she was five years old when she began a finishing school for girls in Kansas City. You're watching Cinema KC. <laughs> Welcome back to Cinema KC. Now, I want to brag about you for a little bit. MK12 did the opening titles for Quantum of Solace. That's James Bond, if you guys did not know that. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. What was that yeah. like? That was uh, like going to college all over again. It was, it was, it was a huge experience, and uh, we learned so much stuff over the, over the course of the 13 months it took us to do the titles, and we also did all the gadgets in the film, you know, all the computer stuff, and. Uh, it was it was it was crazy. How they find you in Kansas City? We actually had worked with Mark Forrester before. He had and um, he did Stranger Than Fiction, mm -hmm. and we'd worked with him on that film. That was our first feature film, and then um, we had done the titles for Kite Runner, the film after that. And during that time, he was offered the gig for Bond, and so we have had a great relationship with him. And he asked if we wanted to do it, and you know. We tried to be professional and said, can you hold while we, while we discuss this? And we hit the mute button and started screaming like crazy. And then we're like, yes, we're, we're interested in this. Yes, of course. Well, congratulations. And, That's oh, yeah. fantastic. They, you know, we worked in England for about two months, got to be part of the royal lineup and meet Prince Harry. Your Prince coolest William. factor was like here. Oh, it was ridiculous. I, yeah, I, I felt pretty awesome for those five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you have another short film called History of America, and that's screened mm -hmm. at Sundance and also mm -hmm. around the world. What, yeah. what was that experience like? That was, that was awesome. That was our, that was, uh, that was our first, uh, our big endeavor. I mean, it was a 33-minute film uh, with a full score. Um, we, are, we are, us and about nine of our friends um, are all the actors, even in the big fight scenes and battles. Uh, we had astronaut suits made. We built our own anti-gravity crane. I want to work for you. <laughs> oh, I know. You and, uh, have fun. That's it was for sure. it was it was a lot of fun. It took a long time to make it, but we we made it originally just because we wanted to see if us 
as a nine-person entity could make, conceive, execute uh, this film, and we were we were able to do it. It was sort of our own, uh, you know, just our own self uh, achievement to say we could do it. And we a did big it. achievement. A that. big achievement. It was, it was very very large for us. It was it was a lot of fun. Sean, we've loved having you on the show. Your Thank films you are amazing, and we are just, I think we're going to send resumes to you to work for OK12, <laughs> if that's, that's all right. Bring them on. Thanks so much for being here. You're just really a terrific talent. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. All right, well, we'll see you next time on Cinema Casey.